I'm representing a neighboring country to Ukraine. So the uh, impacts of the war are immediate and very severe on us. We have been carrying out the largest ever humanitarian operation uh, in Hungary as we have received more than a million refugees uh, so far and uh, we have been taking uh, good care of them. Obviously, we give equal access to them to health care and education. We enroll the kids into um, the schools. We, uh, we uh, encourage the employers to employ uh, the uh, refugees. So we do our best uh, in order to ease uh, their um, very, very, very bad situation. We are interested in peace as a neighboring country. Mm. Uh, and uh, as being interested in peace, we advocate for uh, discussions uh, to be held because we understand that the only way to close a war is to talk to each other. And we really do hope that high level talks will be started sometimes between the big players. Of course, we are, we are not a big player uh, in this regard. We have a limited leverage, but, but as a neighboring country, which is suffering from the immediate impact, we urge all stakeholders to talk to each other and try to close this war because we see the refugees coming, we see them suffering, we see the torn apart families, and this should be stopped finally. That we all understand, but Hungary has continued to take a very ambiguous position towards the supply of military technology to Ukraine. Why is that? Who are you frightened of offending? President Putin? We, uh, we decided uh, not to deliver weapons to Ukraine, just uh, help Ukraine very extensively on the humanitarian side. We are not delivering uh, weapons because we could only do it through the uh, western part of Ukraine, where there's a significant Hungarian community. We don't want that community to be a target of uh, any kind of uh, attacks. And we do believe that the interest of uh, everyone in Europe, including uh, Ukraine, is to, uh, to stop this war uh, immediately. And the best way to stop that is to advocate uh, uh, for discussions. This is our position. We understand it's not in a majority mm -hmm. in Europe. Uh, currently, we constantly have this uh, kind, of, um, kind of debate, but as a neighboring country, this is our position. You continue to butt heads with other countries in the EU. That is true. So, so let me ask you, in terms of the recent survey that I think was done with rather weighted questions about how Hungarians feel about the situation with regard to Russia. Um, Brussels pretty much just dismissed it out of hand and, th and said it felt that the results weren't instructive or helpful given that the, the language used seemed to encourage a specific response. Why would you engage in something like that if it's not deliberately designed to irritate the Commission and irritate members of the EU who are very supportive of providing weaponry to Ukraine? Uh, look, uh, we have been in office for more than 12 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we usually ask for the opinion uh, of the people on all important issues. So 15 occasions already we have done so. When it was about pensions, about migration, about family issues, about the constitution itself, and now about the sanctions. Because this is how we govern. When it comes to a milestone, when it comes to a very, very uh, serious issue, we ask for the opinion of the people. And look, uh, we have around eight, eight and a half million people who are above the age of uh, 18, and 1.4 million have participated in a national consultation, which is a big figure, I mean, if you uh, see proportionally. And uh, these people made it very clear that uh, the sanctions are uh, harmful and they don't want um, uh, sanctions anymore. And look, look, if we uh, make an assessment, an analysis about the impacts of the sanctions, it's obvious that they have not fulfilled the expectations. Because what was the expectation at the very beginning, at the beginning of March, end of February, when we discussed about the first package of sanctions? That they will put Russia's economy on its knees. Therefore, the war will be stopped soon. Now, Russia's uh, economy is not on its knees, definitely. We, we can have, you know, different assessment how badly they perform, but they are not on their knees. And the war is not coming to its end. And Europe's economy is suffering more from the sanctions than the Russian economy. So if you look at, uh, if you look at in a pragmatic way, not in a political or ideological way, what was the impact of the sanctions, you see that the sanctions are more harmful to Europe than to Russia. So that's why uh, we, we, we should not move forward with the sanctions, because simply they have not fulfilled the expectations and the targets we have attached to.
But the time for pragmatism is past, isn't it? When when bombs are falling on civilians in Kiev. I mean, either you support Russia's aims as a legitimate territorial ambition, or you don't. Look, uh, we uh, definitely condemn this war. We are standing uh, with Ukraine. Uh, everyone has to respect the territorial integrity and sovereignty of another country. This war is bad. I already made it clear to the Russian counterparts when we talked that this is bad. Please stop it. We condemn the war. We want uh, peace. But uh, the question uh, is whether the sanctions have helped us, the international community, Europe, whoever, to come closer to peace, because I don't think they helped. And, uh, and, you know, once again, we condemn the war, but we should not harm ourselves more, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we will have to contribute to reconstruct Ukraine. But if we uh, ruin our own economies, we will not be in a position to help Ukraine to be reconstructed. Minister, why then did Hungary vote for the sanctions in the end? Because ultimately, to an outsider, it would look like this was a deal for cash, that this was ultimately all about um, uh, the government effectively trying to figure out how it could get its hands on EU money with the uh, least offensive decision as far as Russia was concerned. Well, Look, I misunderstand you. Uh, yeah, you do, because, uh, because we still don't get the European funds, which are partly ours. So the European Union is withholding money from us, which is ours, because the European funds are not falling down from the sky. They are not from, coming from scratch. They are outcomes of the economic performance of the European community, including Hungary, including the Hungarian people. So this is our money. And the money is being withheld from us for, because of political reasons, not because of legal reasons, because of political reasons, because Brussels hates that there is an anti-mainstream, right-wing, patriotic, uh, Christian democratic government in Hungary for more than 12 years now, and it is still successful. When it comes to the sanctions, you know, we have discussed uh, in order to get exemptions uh, in those areas which were vital for our national uh, interest. Give you an example. We still buy uh, oil and gas from Russia. Why? Because of the infrastructure does not allow us to supply the country from other sources. It takes time that infrastructure is being built. You don't build hundreds of kilometers of pipeline for tomorrow. So the current situation is that physically it's impossible to supply the country with oil and gas without the Russian sources. So we ask for exemption. We, we fought for, exam for <laughs> exemptions, which we got. So that's why the sanctions were not hurting our vital national interest. Is there any likelihood that this position with regard to the war is going to change in 2023? You, you butted heads with lots of countries that would have liked you to have fallen in line with the broad agreement on the approach to Russia. Um, we're at the end of a year. We're, about, we're, we're starting a new year. There is the potential for a new, less um, difficult, I guess, approach from Hungary at this stage. Um, do you think that it might be a way of rebuilding trust with some of your EU neighbours? Uh, look, what I can tell you is that we are totally in line with the others while we condemn this war. We are totally in line with the others who say and think that this war is bad. We are totally in line with those who say that this war must be stopped. We are totally in line with standing up for Ukraine when it comes to its territorial integrity and sovereignty. What we think is that the answers which were given by Brussels, including the sanctions, they simply do not work. So we, we agree with the approach that the war is bad and the war must be stopped, but the reactions made by Brussels unfortunately failed. That's, that's, that's the truth. I mean, and if you don't look at it in, uh, through a political or ideological angle, but rationally, it's obvious. Minister, you have significant investment now coming from China, from Korea. Um, trade is critically important to you. Do you think Hungary needs to be an EU member going forward? Will you stay an EU member over the longer term, given that it's not just the war that has caused ructions with your neighbours, it's your approach to the rule of law in the country, the view from Brussels that democratic institutions have been dismantled, that the media has been gagged in your country? Ultimately, 
Is Hungary going to remain within the EU? Of course. We are proud members of the European Union. Uh, we are taking part in the debates how to make Europe stronger. But you have to see European Union stronger. But, you know, there are two approaches. Uh, one approach would like to see European, the future of the European Union as a United States of Europe. This is definitely what we oppose. We think European Union will be strong if the member states themselves are strong. And I told you that our debate with the institutions in, in Brussels is political because, I mean, we in Hungary have been in office for 12 and a half years, a right-wing government, successful one, definitely against the mainstream, and Brussels hates that. And when they say that there's no free media in the country, yes, there is free media, but it's not entirely liberal. Half and half, conservative and liberal, but it's free. It's colorful, much more colorful than in Europe. If you look around in the western part of Europe, media is like 95% liberal. In Hungary, it's half-half, which, which means that it's free and uh, colorful and diverse, unlike in the western part of um, uh, of Europe. And you know, one thing everybody must respect, and this is the will and the decision of the Hungarian people. And the will of the decision of the Hungarian people have been uh, represented or have been expressed on four continuous uh, parliament elections with landslide victory on our side. This is what democracy is about, fulfilling the will of the people.